To get started on the sketching project, you should have downloaded the Reference Photos folder from the Moodle page. Inside of this folder, I'm giving you a variety of different reference photos that you can pick and choose from for this project. Now, I only want you to pick one of these photos to turn in for your project. However, feel free to play around and start off with any one of these, but only one of them is going to be required for you to turn in for your grade. Once you choose yours, the first thing we need to do is to open this up and turn it into our reference image to use for our sketch. So to get started doing this, let's go to Photoshop. We'll go up to File and Open, and let's locate the folder that those reference photos are in and select the folder or the photo that you want to work with. I'm going to do the tiger for this particular demonstration. Now the first thing we need to do is to change our canvas size to a perfectly square 10 by 10 area. Before we change that, let's go to the Layers panel and unlock your background layer by clicking on the lock icon. Now we can go up to Image, down to Canvas Size, and from here we can type in the direct height and width, 10 by 10. We'll say OK. This will give us our new 10 by 10 area, and from here we can select our Move tool, the little double arrow tool at the very top, Click on your little tiger icon, then go up to Edit and Transform, down to Scale. With Scale selected, we can click on the edge and drag it up to center our image however we want. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to fill out the entire image area. If you want to keep it a little bit smaller so that it can stay nice and centered within your frame, you're welcome to do so. But the main thing is, don't have your image too small or way too big but have it just right and nice and centered up within your area. I like the look of that. Once I've got it, I can hit the little check at the top or I can hit the return key on my keyboard and that'll give me the image that I want to work with. So that I don't make any further edits to this image, I'm going to return to my Layers panel, select Layer 0, and let's lock it back down. The next thing we need to do is to create our grid of guidelines so that we can use this to transfer it onto our drawing area. To do that, go up to View, down to New Guide Layout. Since this is a 10 by 10 area, it's going to be really easy setting up these guides. So we can turn on columns, and we can set the number of columns to 10. And you can turn on rows, and let's set the number of rows to be 10 as well. This way everything is perfectly square. When we say OK to this, that will save up everything. And also while we're here, let's go ahead and turn on our rulers. Go back up to View, and down to Rulers if it's not already checked on for yours. This way we can see where our rulers are, where everything is set up. Now that we've done this, let's set up our actual sketching document. I'm going to go up to File, down to New. The size of this document needs, of course, to be in inches. Set the height and width to be 10 inches by 10 inches. We'll keep the resolution at 300 pixels per inch. Make sure Artboards is unchecked. Do not check that one on. And your color mode can stay at RGB for now. Also, I'm going to keep my background either white, but if you wanted to, you could choose a different color at this point as well. I'm just going to keep it white to show you how you can customize it later. And from here, we'll say Create. This will give us our new document. As we've done with the other one, we need to change the background and also set up our guidelines. Now your background color doesn't have to be a perfect middle gray, but for this project, I do not want it to be a 100% white. I want you to work in some sort of mid-tone. From here, you can then draw on your lights and your darks. So I'm going to open up my color picker, and let's choose kind of a middle gray. Instead of it being 100 or perfectly 50%, I want to let mine be just a little bit darker, so a little bit more of a darker tone from that. To fill it in, I'm going to go over to my tool panel, and underneath the gradient tool, locate the paint bucket tool, and with one click, fill that in so that you get your background color to be that middle gray. Now let's set up our guidelines. We can go back up to View, down towards the bottom, and choose New Guide Layout. 
it's going to remember the 10 by 10, which is what we want, and then we can say OK to that. Now that we've got this done, let's go ahead and save this up as our animal sketch. We'll go up to File and Save. I'm going to save mine with all the others, but make sure your name is on yours. So this will be Ivy Animal Sketch. Also, make sure your format is set to Photoshop so that it saves up all the layers or any other edits and changes that you've done with yours. We'll say Save. And the final thing we need to do is to set up our work area so that we can see both our reference and our drawing area, plus make sure our tools are set up as well. The first thing I'll do is go to Window, down to Arrange, and let's do Two Up Vertical. Now if you want, you could do two up horizontal. There's really nothing to say that it has to be vertical. Uh, I do like my drawing space on the right hand side. So I'm going to click in this empty area here and drag. And keep dragging until you see a little bar appear. And that's going to place it right there beside it. Also, I can click here in the center and drag over. And that will give me more work area. So I'm going to maximize this. And then I can select my reference photo and scale him down and place him up off to the side as well. So that's looking pretty good. Also remember, if you want your guidelines to be less visible or less prominent, at this time you can go up to your Photoshop's preferences. And remember, if you're on a Windows computer, your preferences are found, I think, under the Edit menu. But under the Preferences, there's a place for Guides, Grids, and Slices. Inside of here, you can change your line style from being a solid line to being a dashed line. That'll make it a little less prominent. And I'm going to change my guide for my canvas to be maybe, let's see what a light gray looks like. I kind of like that. It's a little less intrusive, but I can still see where everything is for here. With that done, I'll say OK. And let's choose our drawing tool. Again, just like we did with all of the exercises, I'm going to be using my pencil tool as my primary drawing tool. Don't worry about the brush, we'll get that into that as a later exercise. But with the pencil tool selected, let's go up and make sure you've got a pencil that you know works best for yours. There's no one good brush that you can use for everything. To be honest, you can use any of these general brushes that are just nice and round, soft and hard. Just make sure the brush that you're using works well for the effect that you want to go with. For me, I've loaded up my legacy brushes and I'm going to be working in some of these dry media brushes. Specifically, I love using either the charcoal pencil or the graphite pencil. And then later on, maybe I'll sw swap over to one of these other textured pencils to fill in all the details. Now let's get started painting my reference layer. I'm going to go to my Layers panel. And on top of my background, let's make a new layer. We'll call this our reference layer. From here, I'm going to sketch out all that I can, all the major details and placement of all the parts of my tiger. Now, this doesn't have to be a finished level sketch. This is simply for referencing. Later on, we'll go back in with more details and more outlining. I'll also go to my color picker. And the color uh, that I'm going to work with, make sure your foreground color is selected is going to be kind of, uh, let's go with more of a red. As long as this is lighter or darker than your background value, it should be able to show up. So I'm going to choose kind of this reddish pink. Eh, let's go a little bit redder for that. We'll test it out. Get a larger brush. Still not showing up. The problem is with my tool that I'm using. Let's go for number two pencil. Much better. So with that done, let's jump in and start sketching. So as I look at my reference photo, I'm trying to match up the placement of all the major details that's on my reference photo's face. This doesn't have to be a 100% perfect sketch or illustration. Instead, I'm trying to develop my artistic eye to make sure everything is placed and is the roughly the correct proportion and dimension. Feel free to add your own style to your illustration. It doesn't have to look 100% exactly the same as your reference photo. So to use my grid as a guideline, I can look at the, the uh, ruler at the very top and the side of my document and use those as coordinates to locate where all the major parts are. 
For instance, my nose I can see is falling right along the line for the five and six, right here at the six inch line for this one. So I know my nose will fall along this area and it's right in the center. So between four and five right here is where the center of the nose is. So I can go over here to my coordinates and start to sketch and draw off roughly the placement of where everything is. So it'd be from here to here, actually maybe a little bit smaller, and then the width of it will be from here to here. From there, I can then go in and start to sketch out, and turn on my, and sketch out the rough shape of it. If you need to clean up anything, of course you can go over and select your eraser tool. Then you can go in and erase away any unnecessary lines or stray marks that you've created. Don't forget to use your keyboard shortcuts. By the way, the keyboard shortcut for the eraser is the E tool or the E key. And the keyboard shortcut for your pencil tool is the B key since you've got the, it's nested under the brushes that you're working with. So I'll hit B and jump back into my working area. Let's do the same for the eyes. So the eyes are falling right along in here. And this one falls right at the edge, right in between the eight inch mark and along the four inch mark. So here's four, here's right at the eight inch. This is where we'll get this one. Now that I've got those, I can use those as reference points as well. Let's also get the base of the chin and we'll draw off kind of his muzzle and mouth area. So the base of his chin falls directly under the nose and along the eight inch line for mine. So I've got it right here at the eight inch. So I'm just gonna make kind of a mark down here, roughly where that should be. And I can see his mouth is lined up right along the edge of that eye and right along, right about the edge of this eye as well. So if I was to draw this off, I could use my eyes as a guideline and a starting point for their mouth. So maybe a shape like this, and then it turns, and rounds out to be right about there. And then we can draw off the rest of the mouth area too. Well, I think I've got my mouth a little bit too wide, maybe not so, not so broad on the entry. So we'll swap back over to my brush. The width of it is about the width of a nose, so that'll put it more or less right here instead. Then go up and around, up and around through here. There we go. Let's bring this up. Again, I'm not trying to draw off every single hair and whisker at this point. This is simply a reference sketch for my final illustration. And so I'm trying to pin down where I want all the different stuff to be. Later on, we'll deal with the details. So it, this can remain sketchy, it can remain less solid, but we'll keep working from here. Now I can get the rest of the contour of his face. We'll Draw it off here since that goes up and around. This one goes a little bit more out and around on this side. top of the head reaching almost to the top up to this first line so right about there and it doesn't make a complete circle so we'll bring it over
I'll move my reference image over. Let's get that ear. Ear starts right about here and goes down. I can see I've already got my head a little bit too big, so maybe we'll bring it in. That tucks back away, back on that side. And the edge of this reaches all the way over to the one for here, so we'll go. down from there. You know what, I think um, that ear needs to be a bit bigger too. So I'll swap over to my eraser, erase away that ear, swap back over to my brush, let's bring it in, that looks better. Scooch my reference over a little bit more, maybe zoom in, there we go. Looking at this here, same thing. So this goes almost to halfway point on my image. Starting point is right here in between the six and the seven, right there in the middle. It goes all the way up and around. So between six and seven, there's the midpoint right about there. Let him go up and over. I think that ear is a little bit too high too. Let's swap over to my eraser. I want it more parallel with this one. So this is where I can start to fix any major problems that come up. There we go, that's looking better. And then there's inside of the ear, and these guys little tufts that go over here as well. Pack out my reference photo. In looking at both of these, let's see, and we'll fix the top of his head. This head doesn't go into his ear right there. Instead, it goes a little bit lower. So maybe we'll go down here, grab my eraser tool. That looks much better. Back to my brush. Now let's have fun and do some of the markings that are on his face. And again, these markings don't have to be 100% perfect. They're really there just to act as guidelines so that you know where things are. Especially right here. Back up my reference so I can see the whole thing too. Yeah, there we go. See, all this area is in shadow. It's really dark, so I want that to be noted on mine. Same way for this area of his face. I want that to be in good thick shadow, so I'm going to make reference to that particular shape. I can see it swoops down and in, so down and in for this one. kind of this darker area cutting across his cheek. So we'll make reference to that.
finally let's zoom in and get the markings on his nose. Now the eyes and nose of any portrait that you ever draw are always the most important because that's your visual, that's your focal point. That's the first place people are going to look whenever they want to see something. So I want to spend most of my time making sure the eyes, nose, mouth area are the most detailed. That's true of any portrait. But also everything else can just kind of have its own place. Let me clean up this mouth. I don't like the look of that. So we'll get rid of that. This goes down and over. This goes down and over as well. And really this more or less comes up like this. Now he's starting to look like a big cat. A big old kitty cat. You can see how sketchy my lines are. That's personally, that's really my personal style. But yours can be more loose or more sketchy. At this stage, you can be free. Later on, we'll tighten this up and we'll get more on the smaller details once we get into here. I'm also looking at some of the highlights, lighter and darker areas. Once I know where this is, give me just some basic rough rough outlines for this. Okay. We'll back out some. So far so good. Let's back out our reference and look at both of those side by side. So I've got my reference. Of course the reference is always smaller. If you need to turn off your guidelines you can go up to view and we'll go to hide which is under show. Excuse me, extras. There we go. We'll turn off the extras for this one, select this one, go up to view and select extras. I remember it as hide simply because command H will hide those extras on there. Now that I've got both of these, I can turn off my grid. I can probably work a little bit freer and see where I need to make any changes, <clears throat> excuse me, changes or edits. But I think this is a good starting point. This is going to be my reference sketch that I'll always go back to and use whenever I do my final drawing. Now we can go back in and start to add the details on top of this. Let's go to our layers panel. I'm going to lock down my reference layer so I don't accidentally move it or paint on top of this. Let's make a new layer on top of this one and this will be our outline layer. On top of here this is where we can tighten up the basic outline of our sketch. 